got those bogies rebuilt, now it's time to get at these axle drivers and the rear axle. These old rubbers start to get loose, the teeth start to bust off. Sometimes you'll be riding along, you'll be giving her gas, and all of a sudden you're not going anywhere, no track is spinning. That's because these teeth right here shear off because they're so darn old. So we've got to get those replaced. I'm not going to lie to you, this is a bit of a bear of a job to do sometimes, depending on how much rust you have on the shaft here and how much corrosion is in behind here. We're going to have to drill out these rivets, try to work that cap off because this is an outer cap. Looks very similar to this one right here. So we've got to get that off, got to get these off, I'm going to show you how to do it. These rear little suspension plates, they're actually not really attached very well and they kind of roll around on top of the bearing, which isn't a bad thing, but they're held in place by this little seal. There's a little groove inside here, there's a little groove, there's a little raised portion on this seal that holds it in. So it's a bit tricky to get off sometimes, but not too bad. I'm gonna show you how to get at that. I've got this funky little curved screwdriver. I just sort of pop it in on top of the seal, pop it out. It actually doesn't work too badly. Might have to do it a few times to get at it. They can be a little tricky, especially if they've hardened up. Sometimes there's not much grease in there and then the rubber just gets really tight. A little bit of suction in behind that bearing here. There we go. I'm just gonna pop these bearings off so we can get this outer plate off here. I'm just gonna use my little handy puller here. Same thing that I used on my bogey wheels. Tighten that up. All these replacement parts came in from Kimpex. Same, same people I got the parts for my bogey wheel restoration. There we go. You're going to need four of these flanges. These are your front axle drivers. And these are your rear cogs on your rear axle shaft. You're going to need two bearings as well for either side and you're going to need these seals. All these seals and bearings, they're garbage. You don't want to put those back in. Now it's time to get these end plates off. They're actually screwed in with a nut on the back, but everything's starting to turn and they're kind of seized in there as well. So. You know, I'm not going to use this end plate anymore because they're pretty toast. I'm just going to end up grinding everything out. It's probably going to heat this plate up enough that I might be able to pop that right off. Let's hope. So I'll give it a try. I've had some really tricky times with these. I've had to cut them down. And, but you've got to be careful the back side of these. You've got to be good to that because that part stays intact. It's welded to the main shaft. Okay, so I've tried a few different things, grinding, and now what I find is working. I can get on to the screws. Took a screwdriver, put it inside a pair of vice grips here. It gives me just enough pressure to put on this screw head. I can get these off. Bit of a pain in the butt, but it works. You know, like I said, I've had to do a lot of different things to get these off. And I haven't even gotten this cap off yet, so. I don't know how easy this is going to go. But this is typically what a bench looks like when you're doing one of these jobs. All kinds of tools come out. And check this out. This plate comes right off. I got lucky with that one. Let's see what the other one's like. This one's been trickier, there's no doubt. I'm just taking the re recip saw, working my way around this a little bit. to hit the shaft. 
it is being a little bit tricky on me. As you can see, I'm working my way through it. That's just the way they are. Sometimes they, sometimes that 40 years of rust will grab on and won't want to let go. Let's see what's going on here now. What you're going to find if you're running into issues here, there's a flange on the back side of this little cap. And it's a little thicker and it gets stuck on there pretty good. That's what's giving me my grief. Okay, I've gotten it this far, now don't be alarmed. This is what your little cap might look like by the time you get it off. I really had to pour the heat to it and pound it and then finally put this air ratchet on it or this uh, air chisel, popped it around and off it came. A lot of times you don't need that, but you know what, sometimes you do. Sometimes you just need that heat. A little dirty, but we got it done. And you can still do it at home, trust me. Don't be afraid of this, it's something you can do. Now, I've got the rear axle done. It's time to get this drive axle all fixed up. This one has rivets on it, so I'm just gonna drill those out. Hopefully, this will come off a little easier. I let them soak overnight. I put some of my uh, glide on it, just on the outside of this little flange here. And hopefully, that will let it a little easier. But we never know until we get into it, right? I want to get this sled done. It's pretty nice outside. Some good sledding out there for these older lands. If you miss one part of this, one part of these little rivets, it's going to give you a real nightmare trying to get these out. You're going to wonder what's going on, why they're not coming off. Oh, got lucky there. Yeah. All right, let's see. All right, here we go. Coming. Oh, ho, ho. Wow, right on. That's a drive axle. Now we're gonna install our new drive cogs. Okay, so I'm installing these front drivers on the axle shaft. The rubber ones go on the rear. Don't make the mistake, don't put these on your drive axle because as soon as you give it, they're just gonna pop out and you're gonna ratchet. So you wanna make sure you use these hard plastic type. Put those on there. All I'm using is a 20 millimeter bolt and that's it. Put those through, kind of like the bogies. Just got to put a whole bunch in, take a bunch of time to tighten them all up. And there's a lot of them. There's 18 per axle. I'll tighten this one up right now so the bolts screws don't fall out. I do these ones kitty corner as well. Make sure it goes on straight. Now these ones you can tighten up a lot better. With the rubber ones, you just don't want to tighten them up too much or it's going to squeeze the rubber right out. Put a little bit of extra stress on them. Now you might think, uh, because I'm using little nylock nuts here, I'm not going to need any Loctite. But if you do use just your standard kind of nut, make sure you're using some Loctite. I wouldn't even use the standard nut, to tell you the truth. I would just make sure that you use the proper kind, something that's going to lock for you. Oh, 
only 12,400 million more to go. Old school. I would have to say that without a word of a lie, I've probably rebuilt 15 of these, at least. At least, well, one year I did six. I had six of lands in my shed. We're sitting around the dinner table having a bite to eat, and my eight-year-old at the time says, hey, mom, Dad has six elands outside in the garage. Yep. Not a good, not a good, not a good, yeah, not a good meal after that. Yeah, not good. The question was tabled, do we really need six elands? There are only four people in this house. The wife doesn't drive one. The two kids were just coming into the, all right. You can never have enough lands. They're kind of like shoes. They're kind of like shoes for a lady. You ask a lady if she can have enough shoes. They should have made the lands different colors for every day. That's ready to go. We're going to put the bearings on this in a few minutes. But now I need to put this rear axle together. All these plates, these replacement rubbers I got from Kimpex as well. my first Elan, which was actually a model ski spirit. In 1976, woke up Christmas morning. The old Olympic was gone, 71 Olympic, and the model skier and the model ski spirit was sitting there. And I pounded on that thing for years. It was awesome. It's basically an Elan, right? Same thing. Never kind of got that one out of my system. I mean, years, I think I probably bought the next one when I was about 18 or 19. And then just started restoring them after that. Because they're so much fun. Huh. That's it. You just want to see it disappear a little bit. That's it. Any more than that, any more than that, and you're just squishing the rubber too much, you're overstressing it. That's as much as I do it. There we go. Now, I'm gonna put those bearings on. Kimpex sent us enough of these seals to do the front and rear axle. You gotta make sure that when you put these on, that this little lip here, you can just see that right there, actually goes to the inside of the axle shaft. I'm going to put a little bit of grease on that before I put it on. It is a seal, kind of same kind of maintenance you do with any other seal. A little bit of grease on there, put it around the shaft. There we go. Put this one on too. Right there. Now make sure you use a low temp grease. This is just a wheel bearing grease. It isn't really that necessary to use a low temp one on that spot, but in the bearings themselves, make sure you use a low temp grease. That's that. Now there are a couple of different ways you can do this. What they usually do is they pop off one of these seals, put it on the shaft, and then you grease it through the back axle shaft. There's a little grease nipple that goes on there. I do things a little differently. 
I leave these bearings because they're a better quality bearing. They have a great low temp grease in there. I leave them both sealed and I replace them every couple of years. That's just the way I do it. You know, uh, it's totally up to you the way you do it. But I like to do it like this. There's that one. Now when you're doing this, make sure you do use a high quality bearing. Get it from Kimfax. They're going to treat you right. Now you can use a press to put these on, or you can use a plate here. And that's it. I mean, that's pretty simple. Some guys might freak out, but you know, it does the trick. Sometimes we all don't have presses, right? That little seal is going to pull up against the side of here. Right? Now it's time to install our plates. Now these are little plates that go on, little side adjusting suspension plates. If you put too much grease in here, there's going to be a little bit of pressure. It's going to kind of be harder to get it on, but it should be all right. Basically just slide that in all the way. Just reach around. You can feel that seal just pop right into that groove. There you go. I've just got to put the bearings on this axle shaft as well. You can see that the drive axle is hollow and that's to let the chain case oil come through all the way to the other bearing to keep it lubed as well. I'm going to grease up the shaft before I slip that seal on. I want to do the same thing. You want to make sure that that seal is greased. It's got a little lip on it as well. It's going to snap into the little cup that goes on the outside through the tunnel. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to put the seal bearing on the outside as well. When seal bearings come in contact with the gear oil, the gear oil actually comes in through the seal. So this bearing is going to get grease into it or uh, gear oil in there eventually. So I'm not concerned with that. Perfect. Grease up this part of the shaft. There's nothing worse than putting one of these together and finding out that you've put the seal on backwards or forgotten the seal. That's no fun. Maybe I've done that. I'm not going to say. Go. Open up your vise a little. Slip that like that. Now that one's on all the way, and I'm going to leave this one sealed as well. Now it's time to install these. There we go. All done. Good for another 40 years. I hope this video has helped you out. A lot of people have been asking me, you know, how do you do this? How do you do that for the Elan? This is the same for the Elan, the Olympic, just about any one of the old sleds out there. Make sure that when you want to buy these, you check out kimpex.ca or .com. Use their dealer locator. You'll find out exactly where to buy these at a store very close to you. I got to thank them for helping me out with this build, and I got to thank you guys for coming to Power Mods. Thanks for watching.
make it impossible. 